Hi, class. <clears throat> I hope you all are doing well today. <clears throat> so this is chapter 17, the mathematics of normality, or we're going to focus on the normal distribution. So if you recall from chapter 15, we had a problem where we um, asked a bunch of business owners their ages, and we summarized all that information in this nice frequency table right here. So like two people said that they were age 24 um, and then, you know, um, 15 people said that they were age 30 and so on. So what I did with that data is I um, did a histogram. So you could see that that age 24 is only is really small in height compared to like 30 has is our tallest. So um, I did a it's called it. It's a histogram. Well, you actually the. Um, if a true histogram, the edges of the rectangles would be touch, touching, but that's okay. Anyways, um, <clears throat> now the focus of chapter 17 is the shape of these histograms. So you can kind of see that it kind of looks like a bell a little bit. It's I, We would call this, it's, say, it's a rough, um, it's roughly normally distributed. Now let's look at this picture over here on the right. If we have a set of data and we do a frequency distribution and the, the frequency distribution looks like this, where we it looks like a bell, then um, they call that, and they say that that data is normally distributed, okay? So, um, <clears throat> Normal distribution is when the data distribution has a perfect bell shape, so like this corner. And even if it's not exactly perfect, maybe one little rectangle is a little higher than it should be or something, but we say it's, it's roughly normal, like I said. Okay, so six facts about this normal and the curve that um, is called a normal curve, that bell curve. So there's six facts about the normal curve, and that is... Um, it's symmetric about the center. So we can kind of look at this picture down here and <clears throat> see here's the center of it, of the picture. And you could kind of see that if you could, if there was a mirror or if you took the left side and you flipped it upside down and you lay, laid it down, it would lay right on. So if you took this side, flipped it upside down, flipped it across this line, it would lay right on top of that side. So they, they say it's symmetric about the, the, the center. Then we notice that the, that um, the middle of the data is going to be equal to the mean, which is equal to the median when data are normally distributed. So they often like to say right in the middle of the data, they, they, they call it the mean, but we could also label it the median as well. <clears throat> so um, and we're going to use in this section a little Greek letter called mu. It looks like a U with like curly ends on it. But that is used for the mean or the center of the distribution. Then the standard deviation, which we're going to use this little like looks like an O with a little curl on top. Um, <clears throat> that is the standard deviation, and it tells you how far each number deviates, which means is different from the mean. So <clears throat> if you look, they they like to label it the mean in the middle, and then if you take the mean and you add one standard deviation, um, then you get to this green dotted line. And uh, we will see in future examples, but a standard deviation is a set number of like six or seven or whatever it's gonna be. So if you add one seven to the mean, then you, you, you're you located at this line right here. And they don't depict it very well, but, <clears throat> One standard deviation above the mean is um, is a special spot where it's, it, there's an inflection point, which which means on this gra on the curve, which means it's separating from when it's concave down to concave up at that point. So we call these points where the the standard deviation, one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, are the inflection points. I actually think it's kind of halfway down the hill. I don't like this picture very well. But um, that's okay. 
um, <clears throat> as long as you know that 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 the inflection point happens at one standard deviation above the, the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, then that's fine. You'll understand it. Okay, and then right here, this means two standard deviations above the mean. So if like the so standard deviation was seven, that would mean you add two sevens to the mean, and that's how they got to this point. And add three sevens to the mean, and then you would get this point if, if, if the standard deviation was seven, that is, you know? So so, so it, it shows you how far we can describe by the number of standard deviations it is away from the middle, whether it's below. On this side, it's one standard deviation below. That's why it's subtracting seven from the mean. Or subtracting two sevens from the mean. It's subtracting, subtracting three sevens from the mean. So that's three standard deviations below the mean is negative three sigma here. And a sigma is our as notation for standard deviation. Negative, negative two standard deviations below the mean and negative one standard deviation. Or one standard, well, it's one standard deviation below the mean. I don't want to put two, do a double negative, but this is two standard deviations above the, below the mean, one standard deviation below the mean, and three standard deviations below the mean. There you go. And we're kind of thinking of the standard deviation as like, you know, a, a unit of measurement. Like we have like a foot is like 12 inches. So like we just measure how many feet are in something to measure the length. Well, we're using the standard deviation as like a foot. It's like our, our tool for measuring things. So we can measure how far a particular data value is above or below the mean. And it's really important because um, you can kind of tell where you are compared to the average person really easily by, by saying, okay, well, oh, you're two standard deviations below the mean. That means you're over here, um, and you can kind of really tell where you are compared to everybody else. So you know, that's how they use that notation. All right, next, number four, they tell us, this is called, sometimes they call the empirical rule, which means like from, from experience, they've learned that, and you can see it here, that 68% of the data um, <clears throat> is going to be within one standard deviation of the mean. So like thinking back at this, at this, um, looking at this ages of business owners, that means most of the business owners, 68% of those business owners are going to have an age. And I think the average age was 30, 31. I think the median was 31. So most 68% of the data is going to be, if this was normally distributed, that is, then it would be 68% of the people um, asked are going to be within, are going to be within one standard deviation of 31. So whatever 30, whatever standard deviation it was, maybe it's three or something. Okay. Um, and then um, 95% of the data is going to be within two standard deviations of the mean. And then 99.7% of the data is going to be within three standard deviations of the mean. So we can fill that out. 68% of the data is, is between one and, um, is, is, is between negative one and positive one standard deviations, which, or AKA with we we just say if you mean if you're saying within one standard deviation it means you can go um one standard deviation below or one standard deviation above but in that range created by going one below and one above that's where that data is going to fall but anyways um the next one is 95% and the next one is 99% of the data is between um three with three standard deviations for the mean and then they say all of the area underneath the curve is 100% of the data. If you write it as a decimal, it's just one. If you write it in percent form, it's, it's 100%. Okay, the following formulas will be given to you on the test. So how do we find the first quartile? Because we talked about the first quartile is... is um, where 25% of the data is below that value, we can find it by taking the mean and subtracting 0 .7, 0 0.675 times the standard deviation. And to find the third quartile, we do the mean plus 
0.675 t- times the standard deviation. Then um, you can standardize the standardized value z score um, of any particular data point. So is this is is um, found by using this equation z equals x minus um, mu over sigma. Um, so again, x is your data value. So it might be an actual age. And mu is the mean or median when it's bell shaped like that. The mean is equal to the median. So okay, then um, this one is sigma, which is a standard deviation. And what this z-score is, is it's the number of standard deviations away from the mean. Because they take a data value, they subtract the mean, so that's the deviation from the mean, how far it is from the mean. That's what the numerator is today in here. So then this numerator is saying how far away is this particular data value from the mean. And then they divide by standard, standard deviations because we're measuring it in standard deviations. The distance is measured. So this number, the z, is going to be the number of standard deviations that particular data value is from the mean. And it really gives us an, an idea of how odd or how like similar this value is to the rest of the values, because most of the values are within one standard deviation that mean. Um, <clears throat> so when you are more than one or more than two, like two or three standard deviations above the mean, or below the mean, then you're very you're a very different data value than that from the rest. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, anyways, it, that the z score really helps us compare ourselves to the rest of the group. Okay. All right, and that is just an introduction to. A normal curve. And I'm going to go on in a separate video. I'm going to go and do more examples uh, using the things that we just learned <clears throat> about the normal curve. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.